Today I'd like to talk to you about the role of chromium and uh, chromium copper balance that I found really important and often impaired in the patients that I've been seeing. Hello, I'm Karen von Merwald Guevara. I'm a Western trained medical doctor who today works hands on as an integrated uh, manual body worker in conjunction with a naturopathic medical doctor, Dr. Daniela Hutirova, who brings to the table a really interesting approach called the Azura machine, frequency machine, that gives me the clues to certain deficiencies and mineral upsets, vitamin deficiencies and upsets that I can sense in people so that we get in detail what is not working in a patient. Today I'd like to talk to you about the role of chromium and uh, chromium copper balance that I found really important and often impaired in the patients that I've been seeing. With these patients with a chronic bowel inflammation and or type uh, 2 diabetes, um, I've always noticed in their Azura panels that they do suffer from a chromium deficiency often together with a copper um, toxicity. So different panels, a toxicity panel that shows us the copper and a nutritional panel that shows us the chromium deficiency. Before I'm really able to help someone, I'd like to understand the problem from different angles, not just one at the same time. So one part is my hands-on body work where I have developed this sense of how congested an organ is, how functional, uh, where inflammation is in the body. Uh, and while I'm doing it, I'm actually already therapeutically moving things, starting to help people detox or opening up organs. Another really helpful tool in a different angle are these so-called Azura panels that my colleague generates. And as we can see here, for example, this is a patient who has diabetes type 2, wasn't the reason why she came. It was an overall feeling of uh, not being well, low energy and uh, troubles with dental issues. But one remarkable thing here, as I said before, is copper being uh, part of the toxic panel and then part of the nutritional panel being the chromium deficiency. A patient who uh, had several issues, amongst others diabetes type 2, he was on medication for this, toxic substances copper, amongst others, even copper a second time showing up. Um, sulfate issues, very important here, and chromium deficiency in the nutritional panel. One of the modalities I apply for my patients is orthomolecular medicine. That is the right use of minerals, the right mineral and the right vitamin. So after almost three years of working with the Azura in combination with my hands-on healing work and the patterns I see in patients, um, I'd like to point out the group of patients that would largely benefit from chromium supplementation. So the one type of patient is the one who has diabetes type 2, who always shows chromium deficient. And chromium is a really important cofactor for insulin to work. So it's the chromium supplementation that actually reduces the need for even Western medical, like uh, a medication like metformin, that these patients are on. If you look on Wikipedia, you can read on this. There's chromium deficiency associated with insulin resistance. So the patient produces enough insulin, but with the lack of chromium and an improper diet, um, the insulin can't work. So another group of patients who can largely benefit from chromium supplementations um, is the group that suffers from ulcerative colitis, from chronic inflammatory states of the of the bowels, of the gut, um, it doesn't have to be a full-blown ulcerative colitis. So inflammatory or irritable bowel syndrome, those are other candidates. What we find a lot is that um, copper in this case is part of the cause of the inflammation or co-causing the inflammation and chromium is needed to balance copper. It looks as if chromium and copper hold each other balance. It gets locked up in vesicules like little bubbles, you could call it, inside the gut lining in the cells, the enterocytes. So chromium as a helper to liberate copper and actually make it bioavailable, because this is the other 
uh, interesting uh, fact we see is these people are actually chromium, uh, they're copper deficient, all the while they're copper toxic. What we see a lot with the all-American diet, it seems to be largely carb based. Um, and the use, overuse of these carbs just goes hand in hand with more insulin needed, a uh, stressful lifestyle, uh, again a higher need of insulin, lack of chromium, copper starts to pile up, other factors that add more copper to the nutrition, like out here in the southwest there's a lot of copper in the ground, uh, we've switched from lead pipes to copper pipes uh, over decades, now PVC pipes, but there's still a lot of copper around and that copper too gets part you know, ingested. Um, other reasons too that I see is that there are many supplements, multivitamin, multimineral that contain copper, unfortunately, although many people do have a copper overload. So part of chromium deficiency has as one of the symptoms copper overload. Apart from the chronic inflammation in the bowel that is co-caused by copper, copper overload, there are other symptoms that people can come up with. Um, copper overload is expressed too with painful menstruations in women um, or a chronic general low-grade inflammation of the uh, reproductive tract, adnexitis or a prostatitis in men even, or a tendency to urinary tract infections. So again, these can be symptoms of copper overload and can be remediated with supplementation of chromium. So to put things together, in a diabetic type 2, there's always a low-grade chronic inflammation going on in the gut, just as well as you know patients who have that as their first symptom, uh, chronic inflammation of the intestinal lining. What we find in both patient groups too are frequencies that indicate to us that there is uh, often a sulfate or sulfite sensitivity and that in accord with phenolic sensitivities, gets really biochemical here, or acid aldehyde sensitivity. And those frequencies, those chemicals indicate often a yeast overgrowth of the gut, which is to no surprise because often the sugars or starches can get digested to the very end piece and these leftovers are just feeding bacteria and yeast. So there is sulfate or sulfide producing bacteria going on or living in the gut and uh, yeast production. Um, both these uh, types of uh, like critters living in your gut contribute to the inflammation, of course, as well. So what we want to achieve is a reduction of the inflammation in the gut by a re-establishment of the copper chromium balance. And I'll throw one more element in here in the end, that's molybdenum. So I'm not talking about molybdenum today in length, but wanted to mention that molybdenum too is needed to cut down on acid aldehydes and phenolic sensitivity. So just to make this clear, copper and chromium need to hold each other balance. And for that reason, chromium supplementation is benefiting people with diabetes type 2 and chronic inflammation of the gut and repeated urinary tract infections as well as a low-grade inflammation, generalized inflammation of the reproductive system. Another important place for chromium to work is the eye, is eyesight. And I sometimes wonder whether you know, the deterioration of the eyesight in diabetics, apart from neuro neurological damage, is not maybe chromium associated as well. So chromium plays many roles in enzymatic processes. If you have any of these symptoms that I mentioned before, um, how would you supplement chromium? Here's how. There are many different types of chromiums out on the market. There's chromium picolinate, there's chromium polynicotinate, which is a B3 type, and there's chromium in a chelated state, chromium glycinate and other types of chromium. The way I'd like to see chromium supplemented is uh, in a preparation that I found with one company in specific, Biotic Research. Chromium is chromium, it's CR-zyme. Um, is uh, given in conjunction with uh, SOD, that's superoxide dismutase, so already in conjunction with an enzyme that helps in reducing inflammation. Another type of chromium I like is chromium polynicotinate, the B3 version, but not everybody can work with it. So people who know that they're sensitive to B3 um, should make sure they get the right type of chromium, the CRzyme of biotic research in this case. 
There are some chromium supplements on the market though that I'd like you to be aware of and those are chromium supplements that contain maltodextrin. Maltodextrin, as the name says, contains uh, maltose and many of these patients who suffer from chronic inflammation of the gut or diabetes type 2 are maltase deficient. Like you guys have a hard time to break down uh, these type of disaccharides like double sugar uh, molecules in LA terminology. So when you're looking for proper chromium supplements, um, stay away from those that contain maltodextrin. Please. Like with any supplementations, of course, I really recommend you getting in the hands of a good naturopathic medical doctor or anybody that you have confidence in who could help you with the supplementation. Uh, don't necessarily just go out and try by yourself. It's only natural, baby No trouble for the river to fill the sea No trouble for the sun to keep shining Ain't nothing for the sky to be blue No trouble for me